Changing the bearings on this LG front load washer is a miserable job, but if you could pull it off, you'll save yourself a ton of money by doing it yourself. I'll show you how to do it. The first step is, is going to be to unplug the washer, and it's optional whether you want to unplug the water hoses and the drain hose or not. I don't really need to because I'm not moving this machine too much. Second step is, is to remove the top. You'll find two Phillips head screws right at the back, one on the right and then one on the left. Once you undo the screws, you just want to slide the top back. You might have to put your back into it a little bit. There we go. And then just lift it off and out of the way. The next step is going to be remove the control panel. You'll find one screw just behind this console over here. Remove the soap drawer. You press this little button here to slide the drawer out the rest of the way. And then you'll see two Phillips screws right here. Once you have all the screws out, you kind of want to, with like a little bit of like a peeling motion, you want to release the top from the metal bracket. If you look closely at it, you'll see that there's like little teeth holding it in place. If you can't get it, you could use a flathead screwdriver. Just gently pry and just work your way down until you have everything disconnected. Once it's disconnected, just pull it down and disconnect the two harnesses or one or three, depending on which model you have, and then move it out of the way. The next step is we're gonna be removing, there's four or five screws up at the top here, and then we have to remove some screws at the bottom and then disconnect the door latch, and then we'll be able to remove the front cover. Leave one on so that it holds the whole front panel in place and then we'll undo everything else and remove this screw last so we could remove the panel in a very controlled fashion. Open the door and you want to remove these two screws that hold the latch in place. It's probably going to fall out, don't worry about it. Now with a flathead screwdriver, you want to find the little spring that's holding your bellow on and you want to gently get your screwdriver behind the spring and then just pry it out. Remove the spring and then take the whole bellow and kind of push it into the panel so that it doesn't stop the front panel from removing. And then close the door again. Remove this soap door and pull it out of the way. You're going to have two or three different screws depending on your model. You're going to have one here and one at the top and then there's going to be one more screw hidden behind this. This model only has one Phillips screw. To remove this cover, you just want to pull it from the left and right side until it comes out. The last screw is right there. Don't forget it because your panel won't come off. Now we're ready to remove the entire panel. Put your knee up against the panel and remove the last screw. And you should be able to pull Your lid lock harness might be clipped in. You just want to re remove the harness from that little holding tab. And lift on the door and move it to the side. The next step is, is we're going to remove this metal bracket. To remove it, you want to lift a little bit. And it should come out without any issue. You want to take the soap drawer and slide it back and release it. Take this harness, move it out of the way, and then we're going to take this large black hose and we're going to try and disconnect it. I'm going to disconnect it from the detergent assembly because that's the easiest screw to reach. Once you have the dispenser assembly loose, just flip it over around the back of the machine. Next you want to remove this air vent and then there's a little black rubber hose right here next to the detergent dispenser. Just pull it out. Once you get to the bottom we're going to want to disconnect this heater harness if you have one and then the tub to pump hose and then we're going to try and disconnect these shocks. This ground screw is a 10 millimeter. You will need to cut this one zip tie 
and be careful not to clip any wires. I'll provide a new zip tie in my kit. If you haven't completely drained the washer, you should do that before you go any further. Once we remove this tub to pump hose, a lot of water will gush out. You could use that little brown tube that is very near your water pump clean out to drain as much as you can out. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the tub to pump hose. Now a lot of people like to remove it right from the tub. I actually like removing it right from the pump. This spring clamp is a lot easier to get to than that screw and it's really hard to get it back in when you're trying to reassemble it. So grab a pair of pliers and just squeeze the clamp and pull it out and just move it to the side. To remove these shocks, you kind of have to feel on the back side, there's a pin that you want to push and then you pull it out. The side, there's a tab and this is what holds it in place. So you have to feel while you're back there and push and then pull this pin out. Once you get it started, it should slide out no problem. If you can't push this down, then you might want to get a pair of pliers and squeeze it as soon as you find. Then take the shock and push it down and out of the way. And do the rest. And then move your two clips to the side. The last couple of bits we have to get are going to be on the back of the machine. To remove this back panel, you'll see there's four Phillips screws. Take the panel, lift, pull the bottom out, and then remove it. Now we have to disconnect the motor harness, this rear shock, and this air dome hose, and then we'll be pretty much in the home stretch. The air dome hose, all you have to do is pull. This shock is another one of these pins. You push. Sometimes you gotta do a little twist and pull motion to get this, these shock pins out. The next thing we're gonna do is disconnect the motor harness, but we're just gonna disconnect it from the machine and not from the tub. So we'll remove this ground screw and there's one zip tie down here that you're gonna to have to cut. Undo this little tie and make sure you save this. You're gonna need it when you put it back together. Push the plastic back and remove these clips. We're done back here, so let's move on to the front. This is not a mandatory step, but I'm gonna remove these counterweights. If you don't remove it, it's gonna be kind of a two-person job to remove the tub. If you remove these counterweights, you could practically pull it out by yourself. They're 10 millimeter screws. The weights you just have to wiggle and they'll come right out pretty easy. At this point, you wanna set a blanket on the floor so when you do remove this tub, you have a place to set it down so you don't crack it or damage it. To remove the tub spring, you have to pop this little holder out. Use a flathead screwdriver. And then just move it out of the way. And do the same for the other side. And just move it out of the way. At this point, you're going to lift this spring, so you want to grab it by the meat of the spring and lift and get it off this hook. Now once you get it off the hook, you have to set down the tub very gently, otherwise you'll damage something on the floor there. I'll attempt to do this with my camera in my hand. Okay. And then just remove the spring. The other side I I'm going to have to use two hands. And then you should be able to very easily lift the tub out. Once you get the tub set on a blanket, you're going to want to tip it on its side. And we're going to remove this motor and stator. This rotor bolt is a 17 millimeter. The trick to getting this off is to give it a little pop like that while you're hold holding the rotor. And once you break it free, it should unscrew without too much difficulty. To remove this, you just got to wiggle and it should come out. 
Now we don't have to go any further. If you feel more comfortable, you could remove this stator. Otherwise, we're just ready to change the bearings now. We're going to split the tub and then continue with our disassembly. Now we're going to split the tub. I really recommend either using a socket with a long extension or a nut driver with a long extension. The reason is, is that sometimes you can't get in square if you're using something that's too short. Once you've undone all the screws, you should be able to separate the halves. Sometimes you have to put a flathead screwdriver and just kind of pry it open a little bit. Cool. And then just move this out of the way. Now at this point, you need to remove the basket. And I'll bet you a dollar the basket's not just gonna come out easily. Removing the spin basket is not always easy. If it doesn't slide out effortlessly, you're probably gonna have to persuade it by hitting the shaft. Now you have to use a block of wood or something to protect this. Once you damage the shaft, you basically have to replace the spider arm. You could put the washer on its side or the drum on its side and then put something here to kind of prop it up because it's going to want to rock backwards. And then take a piece of wood to protect your... You're probably going to have a hard time removing this. So get some penetrating fluid and let it soak for a little bit. Unfortunately, you can't use heat. This took a really long time to get out. It really takes a lot of patience. I ended up getting it with a rubber mallet and I was swinging like my life depended on it. Sometimes you just have to let it sit. Other times you just might not be successful in doing it. This job does, does not have a 100% success rate. I've been doing, I've been fixing appliances for 20 years now. As good as I am at repairing appliances, I can honestly tell you that when it comes to LG and Samsung bearings, I probably am successful about 80% of the time. I highly recommend before you buy any parts, before you buy my kit, before you buy anything special, get this washer apart. You have nothing to lose at that point except for a little bit of your time. If you're able to get the tub out and get these bearings out without causing a mess, then you order the kit and reassemble everything. Otherwise, you might spend a hundred or two on some parts and you end up ruining the machine and then you're just stuck with parts that you don't need. So definitely try and get it apart before you order parts. I know a lot of people, they like to have the parts ready so they could get it installed as quickly as they got it apart. You know, if you're willing to take the risk of a hundred dollars or whatever the kit costs, then so be it. But I always recommend try and get the machine apart first before you start spending some money because you might end up just throwing the machine away. So now we're going to remove this back half from the tub and then we're going to get the tub out of the way. Before you go too much further, you definitely want to inspect the condition of your spider arm. This is another reason why you shouldn't buy the kit in advance. You might get all the way this far and find that your spider arm is cracked and that's basically a game over. You can replace the spider arm, but you're really kind of getting into the value of the machine a little bit too much, even with your free labor. If you want to fix it just on principle, of course you could order a new spider arm and replace it. I'm not going to remove this one, but if you want to remove these bolts, it's a 10 millimeter and you absolutely positively have to apply heat. You'll break the bolts in a second if you try and get it off with a uh, regular ratchet. You got to get them nice and hot, almost to the point that they're smoking. But be careful because you have a plastic baffle that is right here. So you don't want to get this thing glowing hot and melt your your clothes lifter. You just want to get it hot enough. Periodically apply pressure and once you get it warm enough, it'll basically unscrew without too much effort. The reason you have to apply heat is because these have red Loctite on them. The Loctite is like glue and the only way to get it loosened, I feel, is this with heat. That's the only way I've been successful with it. We need to clean up this shaft. Definitely clean up around the base. You might have to use a screwdriver or a scraper to get these chunks. Once that's done, you want to grab either a little wire brush or whatever you have handy and just clean up as best you can. You have to understand that this is the absolute source of your problem. Your washer started leaking through this seal and through this seal 
the water got into the bearing and ruined the bearing. Unless you want to do this again, you have to do a really good job cleaning this up. Use the emery cloth that I provided and you want to gently clean the surface. Perfect. The cleaner you get this, the easier your washer is going to get back together. The large bearing sits here and the small bearing sits here. So you want to make sure that those surfaces are very clean and free of crud. After you're done cleaning the shaft, if you see a groove like this, then you need to replace your spider arm. This is not supposed to be there. This is the bearing where a low spot basically and when you finish, if you save this spider arm, your washer drum is going to wobble ever so slightly. It's going to sound like an engine knock, like whack, 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 whack. So this shaft has to be in good condition. And I would definitely recommend, probably a better idea to change it if you're all the way here. Um, LG doesn't sell these for very much money, so they're kind of worth replacing if you plan on keeping this washer long term. Now that we have everything separated we're going to remove this seal and you don't have to be careful with it because you're replacing it. Just get a screwdriver in there and just pry and it should just pop out without too much trouble. Now what we need is a hammer and a drift of some sort and we're going to pound the rear bearing out first and then we'll flip the tub over and pound the front bearing out. This is a great time to apply some penetrating fluid if you have some. So this is my drift. You could use a piece of pipe, whatever you have laying around. And just get it from both ends. One eternity later. Whew. This is like the worst part of the job. If you get these bearings out, then you're basically in the home stretch. This was the culprit. This is why your washing machine was so loud. The seal failed and water passed through into this bearing and basically rusted out the bearing. And that's why it sounds like a freight train when it's going into spin. Now what we need to do is we need to clean up here and we're going to take some fine steel wool and get it really, really clean. The tolerances on the new bearing are really tight. So we have to make sure that there's nothing that's going to impede our putting the new bearings in. There's a little drain hole that you could, you could clear it out. Just make sure that it's clear. You could use a paper clip. So you probably can't see it, but I did some serious damage right here. Yikes, right there. Don't let this, if you damage it, don't let it go. You have to grab a file or something and get rid of it. This will stop your bearing dead in its tracks. So I'm going to get a file and I'm going to try and smooth this out as best I can. If you don't have a file, you're just going to have to tough it out with sandpaper and just kind of get it down as much as you can. If you don't take care of this burr, it's going to cause you a world of hurt when you're trying to get the back bearing in. If you have a Dremel with a little sanding wheel, that's even better. Perfect. <clears throat> so we're ready to install the new bearing set. Now when you get this far, at this point you should order the bearing kit if you haven't already. 
If you want to wash this tub, this is a perfect time to do so. But if you're going to wash the tub, you should unbolt the motor off of the back. You don't want to get this wet. This has some pretty sensitive electronics on it. It's pretty easy to remove. There's a couple of Phillips screws and these 10 millimeter bolts and then you could take it outside and hose it down or pressure wash it or whatever you want to do. Once you order the bearings, the moment they come in, take the bearings out of the package and stick them in the freezer. This actually works, guys. I don't know. Um, I, I know why. It's, it's, if you get the steel cold enough, it will shrink and it shrinks ever so slightly, but it's just enough to make it a very easy experience getting the new bearings back in. So once you're ready, you take the first bearing out of the freezer and then you set it in. A lot of people call for using like a punch to tap it in place. I prefer using the old bearing. So take a towel and wipe this down so you don't get the new bearing all dirty. And then you want to put the nicest side, preferably not the side that you were beating your drift on, but the back side of the bearing is still going to be pretty perfect. And you want to set that over your new bearing. And then you could tap this bearing to set the bottom bearing in. And once the bottom bearing is in, you could just remove this, no big deal. And you've done it perfect with no damage to the bearing. You could use a punch, but it's pretty risky. If you get frustrated or if you hit it too hard, you'll put a burr in the bearing or you might bend it and it'll cause premature wear and you'll end up having to do this job all over again in short order. So you definitely want to keep this bearing in as perfect condition as you possibly can. For no particular reason, I like to install the center bearing first. Now you see I got my bearing fresh out of the freezer and it is ice cold. What we're going to do is we're going to put just a little bit of oil on the outside so it will help with the installation. Once you get it started, I like to grab a little towel so I don't ruin. Well, I guess the idea is to try and get most of the goo to fall off before, but you'll notice it makes a completely different sound when you're set in all the way. You'll feel a very solid noise and you'll notice that the bearing is all the way in. Your weep hole will be completely exposed and you'll feel a little ridge right here It'll be below that ridge and you'll see just a hair of the metal of the interior of the bearing housing. Clean everything up again so you're not making a mess. Now the seal, some people put some detergent on the outside. You could use the bearing again, but just Tap lightly. When you're in, you're going to be in flush. So make sure that you're, you have a nice flush fit. And if not, just give it a little bit more. Now we're going to flip the tub over and put the other bearing in. When the rear bearing is set properly, it's going to be just below this outside ring here. Now this bearing looks different than the bearing that I sell. This is a, um, a metal cased bearing. And quite honestly, I don't think it's a great idea to put the metal casing. I like the ones with the rubber seals. I just feel like it adds one extra layer of waterproof protection you know to keep these bearings from going bad this is a genuine lg bearing my bearings are more robust than the original equipment i don't know what the quality of these bearings are the originals only lasted five years and that's why you're watching this video 
So I think the SKF is a far superior product and will probably outlast the rest of the washing machine. So we're all ready to start assembling this. I'm going to get the inner spin basket back in and then we're going to uh, start putting everything back together. I like setting the outer tub onto the spin basket because you could actually look down and line everything up perfectly. If you hit the shaft against the seal, you know, there's a good chance you might damage it. And then like you saw, I just put a thin coat of oil on the shaft just to help everything slide in place. I'm going to put the rotor on and bolt it down just to keep the spin basket in. And then I'm going to flip it over and we're going to put the tub back together. Make sure this is clean. Take a damp cloth and wipe it down and make sure that there's no metal pieces or anything on this magnet. The tolerances are very close, so if you leave something in there, it's going to start making some crazy noises. Use the Loctite that I provided to put onto this motor bolt. Just put a little bit of the liquid onto the threads and then immediately screw it in with your 17 millimeter socket. There's no like torque rating on this. You just got to get it tight, you know, not don't strip it, break the bolt tight, but it should be snug. Before we marry the new halves together, we do have to replace the tub gasket. You have to pay attention. There's a mark on the gasket and that mark goes at the top of the tub. I really don't know why, but I'm not in a position to argue with them and just tuck in the gasket. You'll know the gasket is installed correctly. It'll feel slightly recessed in the groove. Now we're going to grab the top half and marry the tub back together. Now I've left my heater connected to the tub. So you want to make sure that your heater goes into that metal slot and then just let the tub gently reconnect with the rear half. All of your holes should line up and it should sit pretty easy. If it doesn't go together right, you probably did something wrong and you should take a look and see what you did. Now we're going to bolt everything back together. This is another bolt that you have to be careful with. There's no specific torque value. You just got to screw it in and don't over torque it. You don't want to strip the plastic. Start with one end and then immediately go to the opposite end of the tub. Once you have two opposing screws, make a big T and get kind of an X shape. Before you start putting the rest of the screws in, make sure everything on your tub is lined up correctly and that there's a very little, if any, gap between the two seams. Then just go around and tighten everything else. Put the rest of your screws in. Now we're ready to set the tub back in. But before we put it in, we're going to put the tub on its side and give the tub a whirl. It should spin very freely, very, very freely. So you need to get your springs ready. And what we're going to do is we're just going to just kind of hang them in place for the moment. You'll know the spring is correct when you put the greasy side is going to go on the top here. And just kind of hang them in place for now. We're going to get the tub in and then we'll hook them in one at a time. Once you have the tub set in, you're going to unhook one spring, hook it into the tub, and then with considerable effort, you're going to lift and hook it in. If you can't do it, you're going to have to get somebody to help you. Excellent. Once we put the counterbalance springs in, the washer will sit, you know, kind of normal again. 
during all of this work you probably dropped this piece and this clamp and you're wondering where they go at the very top of the tub this goes back here this is the air vent and it's like a siphon break and then this clamp goes to your dispenser hose that's connected to the tub so you could kind of put that back in its place at least temporarily until you line it up perfectly remember the gray one goes on the top you guys are probably wondering where could you get a fancy drill like this I bought it on Amazon it's got a two-piece drill and impact driver and it's 12 volts this is like the perfect size for appliance repair or just general homeowner use. I've had this drill for over two years and I use it every single day and it's been an absolute trooper. This thing is fantastic. I'll leave a link in my description if you could, if you want to buy it. I think they're like, they usually go on sale for like $100 or $120 for the set. So it's a little expensive but this thing is so versatile and it's very lightweight and it fits in your hand very well. We're gonna get back to reconnecting everything. We're gonna start on the bottom and then we're gonna to go to the top and then we're gonna to go to the back. So the first thing at the bottom is we're gonna connect our tub to pump hose. That's with this little springy clamp. You wanna put the clamp on the hose first and then you wanna grab a pair of pliers and you wanna squeeze it while sliding, you want to squeeze it almost fully closed before it'll actually go in without any effort. So get it like that. And then you could pass it onto the hose, slide the hose over the pump housing. And voila, you can make some minor adjustments. Just make sure you get it right. If this hose lets go, it's gonna flood your house and, and your wife's gonna be really upset with you. The next thing is, is we're gonna hook up the heater assembly. Now, if you remember, there was this thermistor that plugged into this black grommet and then the heater plugged in like this and the bolt I had just kind of restarted it back onto the threads for the ground it reconnect your plug and then use one of my provided zip ties and zip it through this plastic hole in the tub or this hole in the plastic tub and get all these wires secure. You don't need to get it super tight, just enough to keep it in place. Now we're gonna reconnect the shocks. There's two in the front here. And to get them lined up, just simply pull them out slowly and just kind of jiggle them until you get it just about lined up. Take the plastic push pin and push it through. You're probably not going to hear a click, but it'll slide in just easy. Easy peasy. Same thing with the other side. Now we're done with the lower front. We're going to go to the back and finish up those last couple of connections and the last shock. And then we'll get finished up on the top. Back here, and I'm sorry for the poor lighting, we just have this rear shock, this air dome hose. And then we, we, we need to reconnect the motor harness. These only plug in one way, so don't force it. If you got it wrong, they won't plug in. If you do it right, they'll slide in, no problem. This bag is really important. If there's ever a small leak, this will keep the connections from getting corroded. And then with the last zip tie that I provided, you're gonna wanna zip tie 
this motor harness back onto the frame of the machine. The wire harness will sit, there's almost like a trough that it sits on. And you'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. As long as you get it in that general idea, you should you should be fine. Since we're 100% done back here, I'm going to put the back cover back on. On the top here, you have your vent hose. And don't forget, this little mushroom thing goes here. These all have a notch where the hoses line up. And so you want to use those as your guide. And then you have your siphon hose. And then for the final, it's going to be our dispenser housing hose. Make sure that this clamp is in its little groove there and set the screw in such a way that you'll be able to access it when it's in place. One thing I forgot to mention is don't forget to set your little plastic hangers on your springs. These are actually pretty important if your washer ever has like a wild off balance moment the spring won't pop off of the machine. Take your hose, your dispenser housing and line it up. You should be able to slide it into the groove and then just slide it forward. Your wire harness that fit right through here. Next we're going to set this front frame assembly. Now you'll notice this has a hook, one on each side, and there's a little slot that it receives. So you want to line those up first. And you might have to, your cabinet might have tucked in a little bit from the weight of the drum. But once you get them hinged in, it should sit pretty solidly in place. Get the top screws in, so that way it doesn't go anywhere. And then make sure you can line up your dispenser. The housing needs to protrude through the metal. That's when you know it's installed correctly. And then install the last four screws. You're going to put the front panel on. Don't forget to clip the wire harness for your door switch. Right here, this little plastic piece. I thought this was to be important to show you a little trick that I learned with putting this ring back on. So the first thing you want to do is get your door gasket or washer bellow, depending on how you want to call it. Get it like completely in place. And you just kind of have to work your hands around it and it kind of fits into a groove. Once you have the gasket in, your spring has to go at the very bottom here. What you want to do is you want to find a screwdriver or something that will fit inside of this little eyelet. I have this little screwdriver. And so what you want to do is you want to get from the spring to the left, you want to get the ring in where it's supposed to go. And you want to get it as much as you can until you have just about three quarters of it in. But the spring still has to be at the bottom. So now what I do put my thumb here and I put my screwdriver through the eyelet and then you could stretch the rubber keeps the metal in place so it's like your third hand so then once you stretch this out all you got to do is flick the metal into its groove and let go and you've got it perfect. This method is so easy, it's actually easier than the $100 pair of pliers that LG sells you 
to do the very same job. I mean, this is really about as easy as it gets.